Hi, I'm Jeff Phillips, and I'm a clinical neuroscience researcher in the Penn Frontotemporal Degeneration Center at the University of Pennsylvania. My colleague and co-author, Fulvio de Rey, is a neurologist and clinical researcher at the University of Milan. Our research article, Longitudinal Progression of Gray Matter Atrophy in Non-Amnestic Alzheimer's Disease, investigates how the spread of disease throughout the brain differs between the typical form of Alzheimer's disease, which is associated with profound memory impairment, and less common non-amnestic presentations of the disease, in which patients' earliest symptoms are in areas other than memory. It's not uncommon for research studies and clinical trials to exclude non-amnestic cases entirely. However, this practice runs the risk that new discoveries in Alzheimer's disease research may be based on incomplete theoretical models of the disease and may not generalize to all patients. We undertook this study to better understand how the anatomical spread of disease differs between non-amnestic and amnestic patients. In the current study, we investigated three non-amnestic variants of Alzheimer's disease. Logopenic variant primary progressive aphasia, or LVPPA, posterior cortical atrophy, or PCA, and frontal variant Alzheimer's disease. We hypothesized that in each variant, pathology takes root in a different area of the neocortex and spreads in a unique pattern. Each of these clinical syndromes is associated with characteristic patterns of cognitive impairment. LVPPA affects patients' language function. Patients have profound difficulty in finding the word that they want to say, resulting in slow, halting speech. Posterior cortical atrophy, or PCA, affects patients' vision and spatial reasoning, often causing them to be unable to locate objects in space or to misperceive where things are in relation to one another. Finally, frontal variant Alzheimer's disease patients can display a variety of disturbances in attention, executive control, motivation, affect, and socially appropriate behavior. We studied the progression of disease with structural magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI. Specifically, we analyzed longitudinal changes in the amount of gray matter, which includes neuronal cell bodies, in the hippocampus and neocortex. By comparing initial and follow-up brain scans, we were able to distinguish areas of early gray matter atrophy from areas of later disease spread. In LVPPA, the most prominent area of early atrophy was in the left temporal lobe. This finding echoes previous work showing that disease is strongly lateralized to the language-dominant left hemisphere in LVPPA. However, disease did not remain confined to these areas over time. In later scans, we observed a spread of atrophy not only to nearby areas of the left temporal lobe, but also to more distant areas, including left prefrontal cortex and the contralateral temporal lobe. In contrast to the left lateralized disease we observed in LVPPA, PCA patients displayed early atrophy bilaterally in the posterior temporal and parietal lobes, areas that had been previously associated with visuospatial processing in healthy adults as well as neurological conditions like spatial neglect, where patients may be unaware of objects and events on one side of their visual field. However, PCA patients' disease spread over time to include large portions of the frontal and anterior temporal lobes, far from areas of initial atrophy. Finally, early atrophy in frontal variant Alzheimer's disease patients included a substantial part of the frontal lobes, just as this group's name would suggest. The size of this patient group was smaller than our LVPPA and PCA groups, which may have limited the sensitivity of our analysis. Nevertheless, we observed atrophy progression in insular and temporal cortex, suggesting that atrophy may spread more posteriorly over time in frontal variant Alzheimer's disease. In addition, our findings added further nuance to previous studies of hippocampal sparing in non-amnestic Alzheimer's disease. At the time of patients' initial scans, non-amnestic patients did indeed have less severe hippocampal atrophy than amnestic patients. However, we also found that rates of gray matter loss over time did not differ between groups. Taken together, these results suggest that the hippocampi of amnestic Alzheimer's disease patients may begin to degenerate at a younger age than in non-amnestic patients, but that once hippocampal degeneration has begun, 
it progresses at a similar rate in both groups. Above all, these results suggest that hippocampal sparing in non-amnestic Alzheimer's disease is a relative rather than an absolute phenomenon. Our results support the hypothesis that both the initial focus of disease and the pattern of disease spread differ in amnestic and non-amnestic Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease pathology is associated with heterogeneous clinical and anatomic presentations that researchers and clinicians are just beginning to appreciate. We hope that the current study will provide a valuable reference point for understanding this heterogeneity. And we hope that future studies of Alzheimer's disease will include patients with non-amnestic syndromes to ensure that they benefit from continuing efforts to develop disease-modifying treatments.